Hey, what's up, geometry students? Anthony here. Thank you, thank you, thank you for joining me on this lesson. I'm going to help you with these geometry proofs. I know they're making you crazy. So let's go ahead and work through three different examples so that you can better wrap your head around how to strategize and complete these things. Now, as is the case with any of these proofs, we always have a diagram, some given information, and something that we have to prove. And we can prove things by applying what we already know about geometry to that given information and the diagram as we construct a logical argument using a statement and reason table. So in this example, we want to prove that triangle GFK is congruent to triangle HFJ. In other words, we have to show that that purple triangle is the same size as the pink triangle. We have to show that they are congruent. Now we only have one given here and that is that line GJ and line HK bisect each other at F and our reason of course is that it's given. Now to visualize this we know that GJ and KH those two line segments bisect each other at point F. Now when they bisect each other they cut each other into two equal halves. So we can conclude that segment GF is congruent to JF and also that segment KF is congruent to HF. And our reason for saying this is that that is the definition of bisect. Next we should notice that we have a pair of vertical angles. So we can say that angle GFK and angle HFJ are congruent. And our reason for saying that they are congruent is because they are vertical angles and we know that all vertical angles are congruent. Now at this point we should look at our diagram and ask ourselves do we have enough information to prove that triangle GFK is congruent to triangle HFJ? And the answer to that question should be yes because in each triangle we have two congruent sides and one congruent angle in between them so we can use the side angle side postulate to prove that triangle GFK is congruent to triangle HFJ. And that proof is totally done. Now I bet, I bet that you feel a little bit better right now after that first one, but let's go on to a more challenging one. Welcome everyone to Geometry Proofs level two. Now again on this proof same structure as all the other ones that we're ever going to look at. We have a diagram, we have two pieces of given information in this particular proof, and again we have to prove that two triangles are congruent. So first let's identify those two triangles. So we want to prove that triangle RSV is congruent to triangle RUV. And we should see that those two triangles combined make up a larger right triangle. So with that image in mind, let's use the same strategy as the last example and start with the givens. Our first given is that R is the midpoint of segment SU. So if we visualize segment SU with point R as the midpoint, we should know that a midpoint cuts a segment in half. So we can conclude that SR and UR are congruent to each other. And our reason for saying that is the definition of a midpoint because that's what midpoints do. Now we can't really draw any more information with that first given. And since there are more than one givens in this example, let's go ahead and check the first one off and move on to the second one, which says that segment SV is congruent to segment UV. So SV and UV have the same length, they are congruent. Now once our givens are all used up, we have to apply what we already know about geometry and keep in mind that we have to prove that that pink triangle and that light green triangle are congruent. Now notice that both of those triangles share side VR. So whatever the length of VR is in the pink triangle RSV, it has to be the same length in the light green triangle RUV. So we can conclude that VR is congruent to itself, VR, 
and our reason for saying that is the reflexive property. And now it should be clear from our diagram that we can prove that triangle RSV is congruent to triangle RUV by using the side, side, side postulate. Each triangle shares three pairs of corresponding congruent sides. And now we're done with this proof. We have one more, so let's go ahead and give it a shot. Okay, so this proof is going to be a little bit more challenging, but again, same structure. We have our diagram. We have some given information. In this case, we have two givens. And unlike the last two examples, in this one, we have to prove that two line segments are congruent to each other, not just two triangles. So we're going to have an extra step here. So in this case, we want to prove that segment AE is congruent to segment DE. So we'll label AE in blue and DE in green. So let's go ahead and use our first given that angle A and angle D are congruent. Our second given tells us that angle 2 and angle 3 are congruent. So we'll label that on the diagram as well. So now that our givens are used up, let's go ahead and figure out more information from this diagram. Now we should notice that triangle BCE has two congruent base angles, angles 2 and 3, that was given. So we should know that triangle BCE is isosceles because of the base angle theorem. So we can go ahead and add that to our table. Now we should also know that since triangle BCE is isosceles, we know that the sides opposite the congruent angles are also congruent to each other. So we can conclude that BE is congruent to CE because that is the definition of an isosceles triangle. Now you may not be sure if that information is going to end up helping you to prove that AE was congruent to DE. However, always label as much as you can. You can always just take things out of your table if you need to. But the more information that you can figure out, the easier the proofs are going to be for you. Now, we should also notice that in those two smaller triangles, BEA and CED, we have a pair of vertical angles, angle 5 and angle 6. And we know that those two angles are congruent because they're vertical and all vertical angles are congruent. And that was a very helpful piece of information because we should see that in each of those yellow triangles, we have two consecutive congruent angles followed by a congruent side in each one. So we can conclude that triangle BAE and triangle CDE are congruent by the angle angle side postulate. Now, since the two line segments, AE and DE, that we wanted to prove were congruent from the beginning are a part of those triangles. Showing that they are congruent allows us to finish our proof statement, and we can say that AE is congruent to DE because corresponding parts of congruent triangles are congruent. So if the two yellow triangles are congruent, which we already showed in the second to last step of the proof, we can conclude that their corresponding parts are also congruent as well. And that's all there is to it. You guys are done. Thank you so much for joining me. Hopefully you liked our colorful and creative presentation. Please stop by again soon. Have a good one. All right, everyone. That was it for that lesson. Thank you again for stopping by. Be sure to click that link below and subscribe to our YouTube channel. We add new lessons every week. We have some really awesome stuff coming. We don't want you to miss out. And also be sure to subscribe to our mailing list. The link is in the description below. We send out a newsletter every week updating you on all the cool stuff that Mashup Math is up to. It's all really cool content. It's all free. We're on Instagram. We're on Twitter. We're on Facebook. We're everywhere, guys. So don't miss out. Check us out. Subscribe to that mailing list and you'll be good to go. And we'll catch you guys next time. See ya.